phone goes out to moms. On behalf of all the kids in the world, here are two things every mom needs to know. Number one, put down your phone. Unless your kid is named phone. Number two, don't name your kid phone. That's just not right. That's messed up. And number three, we love you. It's just sometimes we don't know how to say it. Sometimes it just comes out screaming or crying. But the next time your kid screams, you know what they're really saying is, I love you, Mom. You're beautiful. Thank you for not naming me phone. <laughs> Four, stop cleaning. Our house is messy. Our house is awesome. It's awesome because we live in it. My mom got stuff to do. Number five, mom upside down is wow. Doesn't really mean anything, but I just thought it was really cool. Wow, it should be like this. Wow, 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 wow. Number six, while well, I have you here, I want to take a second and talk about meatloaf. Meatloaf's like a loaf of bread, but it's meat. Mom, we love you, but let's cool it on the meatloaf. Number seven, thank you for cleaning up all the poop. Number eight, have fun for once. We love to see you have fun. Dance in the grocery store. Uh -huh, I found all this stuff. Or sing in the middle of a driveway. Oh, it'll feel great. great. And then it'll scare your kids so much, they'll be quiet. Number nine. Hug more, shout less. Look, I get it, I get it. Sometimes we do some things wrong. But growing up is scary. There's school, there's tests, there's telling times with clocks that have hands. There's tying your shoes and kilograms and kilograms. Kilograms? I don't know, it's hard, but that's why I go to school. It's just hard to grow up. Sometimes we just need moms, moms to tell us everything's okay. Number 10, the secret to changing the world, moms. Without moms, none of us will be here. Moms, kids love you, 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 and you. If every mom in the world knew how awesome they were, every problem in the world would be fixed. From kids everywhere, thanks for believing in us, putting up with us, and straight up loving us. Mom, you keep us dancing. Awesome mom to you. Let them know you wouldn't be here without them. Get present out. Wow. Some of you walked in this morning and went, where are all the flowers? For 15 years, I've been coming to this church, and on Mother's Day, there was flowers. Some of you kids are going, oh, crud, I got to buy flowers. Some of you husbands are going, we're going to have to stop and visit the $5 shop down here at the corner. Today, we're going to do something uncommon, okay? And we would like, I would like the mothers to stand up, but first of all, do we have any great grandmothers? Any great-grandmothers here? Stand up, okay? We got one, two, great-grandmothers. Good. Now, no, stay up, stay up, stay up. You have to stay up. Now I need grandmothers to stand up. All the grandmothers. Whoa, yeah. That that spring in their step of the new ones that weren't grandmothers last year, they stood up faster this year. That's cool. And now all the mothers, would you please stand up? All the mothers here. <laughs> Funny thing happened at the entrance today. Some, a guy came up to me looking at Katie and said, okay, Russell, I need to know what to do. Do you do you say Happy Mother's Day to her, who is evidently with child? And I said, yes, she is. A, so any of you that are having children, please stand up. There we go. If you haven't told your parents yet, I would sit back down, okay, just in case. I would recommend that. Now, what, 
While you are standing, okay, the mothers and grandmothers all standing, these gentlemen are going to come and hand you a little card. And if, once you get the card, you may sit down. So make sure that all the ladies standing up have one. Let me explain what you're receiving. Instead of flowers today, in the back, we have a whole bunch of jewelry from Eden, Eden Ministry. Did you get a card? She didn't give you a card? Whoa, 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 Simon, Simon, you got a mother here. Come on. I know her mother hit her, but they're, they're both short. It's okay. I know. Okay. Now, from Eden Ministry, and Eden Ministry is a ministry that works with women who have been taken out of the sex slave trade, and they work and do, and these all come from them. So what we've done is we've supported them, and you're going to get a beautiful piece of jewelry at the end. So at the end, as you go back, I want you to remember all the one another's from last week. This isn't Walmart where we trample on each other to get back there, okay? That's enough for all of you, but we wanted you to receive that this year. Uh, it will last a whole lot longer than the flower we've been given for 20, 30 years. So uh, again, a great round of applause for all the mothers that are here this morning. Pay attention to this video, please. These past few weeks have been the hardest of my life. I really wish there were someone I could talk to. Adam and I haven't exactly been on the best of terms since we had to move. I don't know if he'll ever trust me again. In a way, I can't blame him. I really wrecked his life. I feel so stupid. Adam just doesn't understand the effect that serpent had on me. He was so irresistible. I felt like I couldn't help myself. I keep reliving that moment when I first looked down and realized I was naked. Then I glanced over at Adam and realized he was thinking the same thing. For the first time since we met, I couldn't look him in the eyes. We've never felt awkward around each other. Now we feel that way a lot of the time. Even though God gave us real clothes, to replace those useless fig leaves, I still feel so exposed. Not just on the outside, but even more on the inside. I never used to think about how I looked to Adam. I always knew that he loved me and thought I was the most beautiful thing God had ever made. Now I find myself wondering if he really loves me and finds me attractive. Does he wish God had given me to him? So begins one of the several chapters in this book called Lies Women Believe. And it is so true and so popular, they have lies young women believe. Because it starts much younger than just by the time they're women. I want you to write something at the top of your bulletin, and it's not there, it's not a fill in the blank. I want you to write this in at the very, very top. 2 Corinthians 10.5. 2 Corinthians 10.5. And I'm going to give you just a phrase that I want you to write there. It says, and take every thought captive. And take 
every thought captive to obey Christ. I repeat it, 2 Corinthians 10.5, and take every thought captive to obey Christ. While we were doing the soul revolution and we had the app, one of the ones that really impacted me was when it would come up and have that verse on there. And then it said, following that, it said, every thought that comes to your mind, take it to Jesus and ask him what you want, he wants you to do with it. Every thought that comes to your mind, take it to Jesus and ask him what he wants you to do with it. Wow. May I just say that that little exercise would change the way we live on a day-by-day, moment-by-moment basis? Just every thought taking captive. And here's what I want you to remember as we go through the message, and you can write this in too, anywhere you want there on there. Jesus never lies. Jesus never lies. So as, as you take every thought to him, his response to you will be truth. No matter what the lies are, he will always tell you the truth because Jesus never lies. With this in mind, I want us to go over five common lies women believe about themselves. Common lies that women believe about themselves. And I think as you go through this, you will find out that all the guys shouldn't just check out today. Because amazingly enough, a lot of these same lies we're buying into as men. Many of the same things are affecting us, maybe at a different level, maybe, but the lies are out there. And the only way to get over a lie is with truth. When we live our life based on a lie, we're not going to live the life that God wants for us. So I want us to understand, first of all, the common lies. Lie number one, I'm not worth anything. I'm not worth anything says that more than 42% of the women surveyed said that they believe this lie. Not worth anything. Just no value at all. Now, the reason this lie comes to them, it's, it is often the result of something said by others. Sometimes it is said unconsciously. Maybe, maybe it's a generalized statement and someone says, you know, women aren't worth very much. And every woman out there goes, that, that's me. That's me. They're just not worth as much as someone else. You hear in the news where someone says, you know, the number of, of girls being aborted in countries where they can only have one child or two children, and they abort the number of girls because there's more value in the boys, so that means girls aren't worth anything. And you hear that, and even though it wasn't aimed necessarily at you, just by hearing that generalization, it, it's something you take. Or it may just be a joke. Maybe someone said it just jokingly and, and, and threw something out there, but it, it, it stuck, and it worked its way into your psyche. It worked its way into your life, and you begin to believe that you weren't really worth anything, or maybe it was intentionally. Maybe it was intentionally. Some hateful or angry word. Your dad was upset and made a statement. You're, he, 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 he just, he said something and, and it, it went way deeper than he ever imagined. And it just stuck with you. And it's been there. Maybe your boyfriend was mad and he made some statement or as you were breaking up, he thought, let's go out with a bang. And so he makes a bunch of statements about you.
Guys, listen to me very carefully. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Your words hurt. Your words go deep. Even if you come back later and say you're sorry, it already pushed the seed way down deep and it hurt. It says, don't do it. As I, was, as I was preparing for this message, I remembered the words of Jesus where it said, talking about children in general. And it says, if anyone makes one of these children fall, stumble, it would be better If we took a rope, wrapped it around his neck, tied the other end to a great big stone and threw it in the deepest part of the ocean and let it drag him down with it. That's what Jesus said about the uncaring words of adults and children. Fathers, can I say this? Sometimes the hardest thing to teach your daughters about God is because we refer to God as the Father and you often are nothing like God. And the other side is the easiest thing to do to help a young lady learn about God the Father is if her father will be like God the Father and it makes it easier for her to believe in God. Our words do matter and they will be used either as instruments of grace to lift or as something Satan can slide in with and implant a lie into the life of your daughter. But here's something very interesting. If the speaker is looking through a defective lens, then their opinion is distorted. See, if, if, if the one looking at things, is not looking at it through the lens of God and Christ, then whatever they say is it going to be right anyway. It's so important that we understand that when anything, any shape or form of this lie comes our way, we are to take that lie, take it to Jesus and say, what do I do with this? And Jesus is going to tell us the truth. Because Jesus never lies. Let me give you a second lie. Beautiful girls are worth more. You ever heard that one? You ever thought that? Has it ever been implied? Has it ever been? Beautiful girls are worth more. One of the things the author brings out in her book, it says a part of the original temptation was that, Sat- that, pre- that Satan presented to Eve was that a beautiful fruit was more important than her relationship with God. The beautiful fruit was more important than her relationship with God. She saw that it was beautiful. Now, God had said, don't touch it. Don't eat of that. Don't do that because the day you do, our relationship is going to break. It's going to die. There's going to be consequences. But she took the beauty without taking into consideration the importance of the relationship. An outward appearance does not necessarily reflect the inner condition. You ever bought an apple that was really beautiful on the outside or a watermelon or or something like that, just beautiful on the outside, only to cut it in half and in the middle it was already rotten? It's like, oh, but it was so pretty on the outside. And let me tell you something. If you haven't watched a Disney film later, they can make witches look really good on the outside. And just witches on the inside. No, no. You you can't judge what's in there simply by what you see 
on the outside. And here's the bottom line. Value to people does not mean value to God. Someone may think this one, her looks make her look like she's worth more. And God's going, but wait, that's not what I look at. Remember when, when Samuel called Eli and said, hey, gather all your sons together. Uh, the next king of Israel is coming from your sons. And so the first one came up and he looked very kingly. He, he looked really good. And, and Samuel's going, okay, here it is. This is the next one. And God goes, no, 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 no. And Samuel's going, but, but look, to put it in our terminology, he looks very presidential. And he's going, no, no. You're just looking at the exterior. I'm looking at what's in the heart. And he went one to another, to another, to another, through all the sons and said, is this all you got? Well, there is that one, but the, the young one, he's way out in the field. You know, he, <laughs> he's not very presidential. Oh, yeah, but God's looking at the heart. See, this idea that beautiful girls are worth more, take that thought to Jesus. Ask him, what do you do with that? Because you know what he's going to say? No, that's not true. Just disregard that. Disregard what they said. Disregard what they think. Disregard because that is not truth. And Jesus never lies. Here's one that we all buy into. I mean, this is men, women, everybody. Ready? I have my rights. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. I have my rights. You know, we've been told that demanding our rights is the ticket to happiness and freedom. If we just get everything we deserve, if we just stand up for ourselves, stand up for our rights, then everything will be fine. I have a question for you. How does that work in traffic? How does that work out for you? Well, I have my, I had the right of way. <laughs> You never see a sign on the highway that says, go for your rights. What does the sign always say? Yield. <laughs> Yield. Keep things moving. Keep things... Sometimes you get ahead by yielding, not getting your way. Wow. It's interesting. When we are constantly worried about our rights on the job, in the home, in school, before teachers, and, and our feelings get all bent out of shape when we think we deserve something and, and we didn't get that, you know what happens? We get in bondage to it. Write this down. Constantly claiming our rights only puts us in bondage to our emotions. Because I want you to know something. We don't always feel like life is fair, do we? I was reading Ecclesiastes 7 this morning, and the, the whole thing is about that. It starts off, it basically said, you know, life isn't fair. And I'm thinking, okay, I, I can understand this one. You know, the, the good people, bad things happen to them, and bad things happen to good people. It's just not fair. If nothing else, those coming out of middle school should learn one thing in my house. What is it? Life's not fair, and then you die. Very good. You can tell who's actually been there. It's just not fair. But you know what? It's not about all claiming my rights. We get tied into our emotions. We get, I deserve more than this. I, 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 that's a lie. Don't buy into it. It, 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 will, it will hurt you. 
It will put you in situations that you can't get yourself out of if it's simply about your rights. Here's one. <laughs> oh, I wish Marcel and I had a dollar for every time we've heard this one in counseling. We would have fun. And it's this. I can't help the way I am. I can't help the way I am. Wow. This lie takes many forms. The, you may hear someone say, well, that's not the way I was raised, or that's the way I was raised. You know, where I'm from, that's the way it is. Or, you know, I, I had certain disadvantages in life. I have a friend of ours, and she had a child who was premature. Today, the young man's in his 30s. If he trips, it's because he was, he was a preemie. You're going, really? Everything in his life. Well, you know he was premature. Yeah, but, you know, after 30, you should get over that. My, my dad, when he was born back in 1931, he was two pounds. I mean, two pounds. My, my granddad put him in a shoebox and put him in the closet. When somebody came in and said, heard we had a baby. Yeah, I pulled him out of the closet and opened it up. How many of you know my dad? Would you say he's recovered? <laughs> you know, if you can recover from that, then, then you can get over anything. If everything about your life today is because of stuff that happened to you a long time ago, hey, you're believing a lie. You've bought into that, I'm a victim. I'm a victim of all of these circumstances. And you're reacting to the wounds inflicted on you by others. That's a lie. And it's a big lie. Why? Because you're saying someone or something outside of ourselves is responsible for who we are. It's not my fault. That's because my dad, that's because my mom. Have you ever seen two kids grow up in the same household, be exposed to the same difficulties, the same problems, and yet their lives come out completely different? Why? One bought into the lie that whatever happened to me determines who and what I am. And the other says, no. My decisions, my choices determine who and what I'm going to be. Satan knows that if we believe this, that we can help the way we are, we'll never change. We won't make the tough choices. We won't take the tough steps We'll just simply always lean back on the fact that, hey, I'm that way. I can't help the way I am. It's all somebody else's fault, not mine. Whenever you get to feel that you're the way you are because of somebody else, take that thought to Jesus. Say, Jesus, is this really all there is? Am I condemned forever to be the victim of what happened or didn't happen or I wish could have happened or should have happened or anything like that? Is that it? He's going to tell you, no, that's a lie. And Jesus never lies. Give you the fifth one. I have to perform to be loved and accepted. I have to perform. When they surveyed a group of young ladies and, and women about this, 
they came up to the understanding that an amazing 95% of girls and women struggle with this. 95%. And may I say, if you got a bunch of guys together and you went through it and you measured things and asked them to be honest, they would probably come in right there too. My performance, what I do on the job, what I do at home, what I do here, what I do there, I have to perform, and perform can imply everything from grades to accomplishments, from sexuality to motherhood. You know, if I don't get the grades, then they just won't love me. Dads, moms, listen to me. Listen very carefully. Your kids are far more than whatever grade they get, whatever award there is. Some of those awards are highly overrated in life. I went back and looked in my yearbook. The guy most likely to succeed committed suicide. Oops. Messed up that award. And I can guarantee perfect attendance doesn't mean squat shortly after school. <laughs> Thought I'd throw that in just for the heck of it. <laughs> that means I have no life and I want everybody to know it. But anyway, <laughs> women who can't have children, who think nobody will love them, that they're not important in life because they don't. No, 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 no. Women who've carried children inside them and then they've lost them and think that somehow they're not as important, not as valuable as, as those who were able. No, 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 no. And once again, if the people around do anything to say that there's less value or less importance or, or if someone remains single all their life and, and, and then that's just horrible, something's wrong with you, no. That's a lie. Don't buy into that. And young lady, listen to me. When that guy that says he loves you says, if you really love me, you'll give yourself to me, you tell them, listen, go talk to Russell. <laughs> and Russell's going to beat the daylights out of them for the glory of God. No, no, that's not love. I asked my daughter the, the other day, watching this Dove commercial, I said, when is it that little girls stop liking themselves? She said, middle school, or maybe 10, 11. Listen to me, people. We have a great responsibility to every little girl around us. Dads, you have a great responsibility to ever little girl around you. The truth in your words matching the truth of God's word can be a strong thing to break the lies that these little girls are believing. Please don't let the lies define them. Pay attention to this song.
five lies. So I want to give you five uncommon truths that will set women free. And anyone who has believed the lie, this truth will set you free. The first one is this. Your value is determined by how God views you. Not how your husband views you, not how your dad views you, not how your boyfriend that broke up with you views you. No, your value is determined by how God views you. It says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. You are so important. You are of such value that God sent his son to this earth who died for you. If there was no one else in the world, he would have come and died for you. You are of such value that because of that and by believing and accepting him, one day you are going to share in his glory. 
You are going to be right beside him when we're out and looking over all of the world. You will be right there because you are that valuable to God. And I just want you to know that is more important than anybody can say. What anybody does, God says you are very, very valuable. And God never lies. Let me give you a second truth. Beauty is more internal than external. Beauty is more internal. The next to the last verse of the book of Proverbs says this, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last. How many of you would say amen to that? Oh, gosh. Did you look back at the pictures of a few years ago? Anybody getting to where they hate Throwback Thursday? <laughs> then that, does that not throw you into Depression Friday or something? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You look back and you look back at things and go, where did that person go? And you, you feel like, you know, in Peter Pan where the guy's pushing on his face, Peter, are you in there, Peter? Why? Because I just want you to know something. Beauty does not last. But it says, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. You know, I, I know some amazing women who, who have impacted literally hundreds of people in a very positive way. And if you just look at them on the outside, you pass them down the street, you would think there's nothing there. And oh, there is so much there. First Peter 3. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. It never said, just let yourself go. It's not what that verse is saying. It doesn't say that it doesn't matter, that it's not important to take. It doesn't say that. It's saying, don't put all of your effort into the external because the internal is so much more important. Had a lady that visited our church and the first day she came, I went to visit her. This is when our church was small and basically anybody knew it was easy to follow up. We, we went to her house and she invited me in the house, and I sat down. She handed me something to drink. She said, I have a question for you. Now, I always love it when we start off that way. She says, in your church, do you let women put on makeup? I thought, wow, this is a determining factor. And I said, if I got to look at you for an hour every week, I hope so. She was here for 20-something years. <laughs> that, that, that worked. It doesn't say don't do these things. Don't, don't take this passage and say, God says no makeup, no that. No, no, that's not what it's saying. It's saying, listen, you can put some effort into that, but don't think that putting your effort into that is by any means going to make up for the other. You can be the most beautiful thing you want to be on the outside, but if the inside doesn't match, it's a waste of time and money. Third truth. Claiming your rights will put you in bondage. Yielding your rights will set you free. Jesus said, if you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, 
you're not worth being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. See, the abundance, the wonderfulness of life is not when you say, no, I want it my way, I have the right. It's when you say, God, I am yours, here's my life. I'm giving up my rights to you. I am offering myself as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Take my life. I give up the my pursuits and my dreams and my wants and what I deserve and say, Lord, I am content with what you have for me. You plus nothing else is everything. Here I am. That will get you a life. Whether you're a lady, whether you're a man, it won't make it in life by always getting what you want your way. Give it up to him, and he will do so much better with your life than you will. Fourth truth, transformation is the result of choices to obey God. Transformation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You know, this idea that I'm just this way, I can't change. Everybody can change as long as we go back and replace lies with truth. And when we have truth, then every time something comes up, we make a choice to follow the truth or keep going down the lie. And if you will obey the truth over and over Again, you will set up different patterns in your life, those destructive patterns that make you lose everything you think you're getting. Those destructive things that take you down, 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 down can turn around and build up, 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 up if you obey. At every thought, at every turn, at every situation, you have a choice to make in your life right now is the sum total of every choice you've made up to this point. That's it. It's you. No, it's some no, it's you. So choose to obey God. And the last truth. Nothing you can do can make you more or less acceptable to God than what you already are. Romans chapter 8, verse 38, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God doesn't love you based on your performance. God's not going to love you more based on your performance tomorrow. It's not performance-based. It is grace-based. It is love-based. And God loves you and extends his grace to you, man or woman. But I want to conclude speaking to the ladies. The truth that the Bible has about you is just that, truth. Truth 
can overcome any lie you've been told, any lie you believe. God does not lie to you. Pay attention to this. You are beautiful. You are smart. You are funny. You are kind. You are unique. You are worthy of love and affection. You are never too much. And you are always enough. You are precious. You are a diamond, a rose, a pearl, the most stunning of all God's creation. You are worth more than you could ever imagine. Worth more than the numbers on the scale, or the hair product you use, or the shoes you wear. More than how many girls wish they were you, or how many guys wish they had you. More than the price tags on your clothes, or the percentage at the top of your math test, or even the number of followers you have on Twitter. Your worth surpasses all earthly things, because in the eyes of the Lord God, you are loved, and you are worth dying for. Regardless of who you think you are, whether you model in a magazine or you model pottery with grandma, whether you're on the hot list or the not list, whether you're a head cheerleader or a high school dropout, whether you're Miss Popular or you've never had anyone you could call a friend, whether you love yourself and love your life or you can't stand to look in the mirror and you feel as if everything in your life is falling apart, whether you're such a winner or you feel like the world's biggest failure, regardless of who you think you are, the reality is, is that you deserve someone who would give up their life for you because you are powerful and strong and capable. Read about the women in the Bible. Esther, Ruth, Martha, Mary. These women changed the world forever. And inside of you, each and every one of you is a woman with that same power and that same strength and that same world-changing capability. And your responsibility is to find that woman and to set that woman free. This is who you are. And any voices in your mind that try and tell you differently are from the enemy. And the next time you hear them, this is what you say. You say, nah, uh not me, Satan. I am a daughter of the living God, cherished, loved, and adored above all things by the creator of all things for the glory of him who is greater than all things. I am awesome. And please, don't you forget it. Even as the words were being put up on the screen, some of you were listening to the lie that said, yeah, them, but not me. It's just so hard to believe the truth that God says because so many voices are lying. 